About this time last year, I got my first hands-on experience with a three-axis gimbal. It was this guy right here, the Ryder M from Xion. I was blown away by the quality of footage you would get out of it and kind of the, the next level it would take everything you shot to. It would be, it was smooth. It gave all of the footage I shot this really cinematic quality and I have been preaching for the last year that gimbals are amazing and if you're stuck between buying a second GoPro camera and investing in a gimbal, really investing in that gimbal will allow you to take a lot of your footage to the really that next level and really give you that cinematic feel to a lot of what you shoot. Fast forward a year and I've got this. From Xion again, it's the Crane M. It's their larger, um, larger gimbal that allows you to put any kind of camera you want on here as long as it's underneath the weight limit and shoot super stable video footage with it without really any prior knowledge or hassle. You just push the button and the camera points and off you go. So it's absolutely incredible. You can put pretty much any kind of camera you want on here from a point and shoot to a GoPro on a tripod mount to a mirrorless camera to a small form factor SLR and it just it's got some adjustment points to allow you to adjust for those different cameras and then it just works. The footage is amazing. The Crane M to me couldn't really have come at a better time. We've seen GoPro releasing their Hero 5 camera, which has a different form factor than the Hero 4s, meaning that gimbals like the Ryder M are useless for the Hero 5 because it doesn't fit into the mounting system. And then there's other companies that are releasing things like this, which are a, a cell phone gimbal, but they only work with cell phones, which means if you want to put a camera on there, you can't really. Whereas the Crane M and it, with its tripod mount gives you the flexibility to put kind of anything you want on here. You put the GoPro with a tripod mount on here and it works. You put a point and shoot camera on here, it works. You put your SLR on here, as long as it's small and underneath the weight limit, it'll work. This is really cool because it means that if GoPro changes their form factor again or you get a new camera, your gimbal will continue to work with them and it's not specific for the camera that you have right now. It does make the, the high cost of this gimbal a little more manageable knowing that it will work for different iterations of cameras as you go on and your, and your kit starts to grow. The adjustability of this gimbal and the initial balancing is huge. It's the key to why this gimbal is so easy to use with different cameras and it can kind of scale from anything from a little tiny GoPro all the way up to like a SLR and that's because each one of the axes gives you the ability to adjust it to get the balance just right. So all of these little silver screws here you undo and you're able to slide the, the axes in and out to get the balance point just right. You do this the first time you put your camera on here, you get it all balanced up and then it's able to work perfectly. If you don't do this, you don't end up with the, the gimbal working properly because it, you, need the, you need the camera balanced so that there's kind of not much weight going into the motors and the motors just keep it pointing in one direction. The fact that everything you need to balance is right here on the gimbal make it really, really easy to use. However, that does not excuse the fact that in order to put the gimbal away in the case it comes with, which is a really nice foam line case, you actually have to unscrew all the thumb screws and reset them back to their default settings, which means that if you wanna take this apart and put it in a case to transport between two shooting locations, you have to rebalance your camera when you get there which is something I'm not really a fan of. I would have loved it if it was able to go in the case with the, the settings that I was currently using saved and I didn't have to readjust every time I put it away and got it back out. While we're on complaints, the base plate that you mount the camera onto at the, at the bottom here, so where the, the screw goes to mount the, the camera onto the gimbal itself, is not big enough for many of the, the different uh, tripod mounting locations on lots of different cameras. So for example, some point and shoot cameras have it off to the side and this base plate isn't able to mount there and then because you can't mount it there, you are not able to balance the gimbal properly for those cameras. So I would have loved to see a larger uh, platform at the bottom with lots more options on where to put this screw and, uh, and mount the camera. Those are really minor complaints compared to some of the amazing things they've done. The, the, the toolless adjustment and toolless balancing is awesome, as is the fact that this gimbal has unlimited 360 degree rotation, meaning that this head can spin like this forever. So there's no pass-through wires going into the gimbal head. They figured a way to make these joints able to rotate continuously, which compared to something like many of the other gimbals on the market, which only have like 90 degrees of freedom, like this one here, you can see you can only rotate it from there to there and then it hard stops. 
is awesome. And it, while it's not a big deal and it doesn't really change the kind of footage you can shoot with it, it makes setup a lot easier because you can just get this out, whatever position you put it in, when you turn it on, it'll figure out how to adjust the camera properly for whatever angle you're shooting. You never end up with it trying to hit its hard, uh, hitting the end of its rotation spot. You can just, it'll just rotate forever. All of that's true on all of the access points. It's awesome and well, it's not a huge feature for the footage you shoot out of it, it is a huge feature for usability. On the control panel, there's one button to turn the camera, to turn the gimbal on and off. You push and hold that to turn it on. And then there's a tripod, a little um, joystick that allows you to angle the camera if you so desire. So you can point it up and down like this using the little joystick here. And all of that movement is dampened to make sure that the footage you get out of it is smooth. The other button on the control panel is the mode button. So there's the, the default mode is lock mode where the camera will always stay pointed at the same angle with regard to the horizon. Double tapping the mode button will put it into uh, follow mode. So as I tilt down, the camera will tilt down. I tilt up, the camera will tilt down and it'll continue to do that on all both axes. So up and down and sideways. The Crane Am comes with everything you need to get shooting in the case the two batteries, the battery charger. The first time you set up the Crane Amp, you're gonna get the two batteries of the case, put them in a handle, screw the handle onto the, the gimbal itself, and then just put your camera on and then spend a little bit of time balancing it. The balancing is not hard with those thumb screws. It's super easy to get balanced and there's a really good instruction guide that comes with the gimbal. So balancing is easy. It takes like 15 or 20 seconds once you're good at it. And after that, you just turn it on and you're ready to go shoot. It is simple to use. You just point it at whatever you want to shoot and you get smooth footage of that. It's so much easier to use than something like a glide cam or a larger mechanical stabilizer. It's, it's just kind of foolproof and you get smooth footage out of it at the end of the day. It is expensive, but it can transform the kind of footage you can shoot with your, with your camera and it's flexible so it works across multiple different cameras. You're not just buying a gimbal for your GoPro, you're buying a gimbal that'll work with your GoPro, your point and shoot camera and your mirrorless SLR if you wanted it to. We heard it in the GoPro launch video, the Hero 5, the difference between the video that they post in their channel and the video that everybody else shoots is in stabilization. And that is really what sets apart amateur video from professional looking footage. And this is a way that you can shoot that professional looking footage with pretty much any camera you own as long as it's under the maximum weight of the gimbal. If you've enjoyed the video and you want to learn more about the Crane M, you can check it out. It's linked down in the video description. If you've got questions or comments on this gimbal or the review, leave them down below. I'd love to check them out. And tell let me know which gimbal do you use or which gimbal do you want. Um, are you mad that your GoPro gimbal doesn't work with your Hero 5 anymore? I know that I am. Until next time, guys, thank you very, very much for watching.